So hello everybody, uh, my name is Daniel and uh, earlier today I will, was so fortunate to be one of the first in the world to receive the Fisker Ocean One. And uh, I'm not a professional car reviewer, but I have been driving the Tesla Model Y Performance for a while. So in this small review here I'm going to compare those two cars and bear in mind that I'm no professional reviewer, so I'm going to take it away. So a quick tour around the car and um, also some, some early thoughts on my uh, experience with the car so far. So first of all, since I've been driving the Tesla Model Y Performance opposite right, I'm uh, comparing the car uh, a lot to that car. And um, I think what I'm gonna tell you the first is that when it comes to the, the comfort, the suspension, um, and also the, the noise in the Fisk Ocean 1. I actually think it performs better than the, the Tesla Model Y performance on, on those uh, parameters. Um, when it comes to the software, I know there's been a lot of stories and theories around the, uh, the, the software, but I th my impression is that it's more mature than I actually were afraid of. It, uh, it wasn't right. So I'm positively surprised with the uh, with the software um, in the car as well. But I'll get back to the menu. Uh, but because obviously, right, I think Tesla is further ahead her, ahead her. Uh, but on the time, in the time that, that uh, Fisker has had, I think they come fairly far with the, with the software. So that is a, a compliment as well. Um, if we just take you through the car, you have the uh, charging port here. And then you have uh, obviously the, uh, the door handles here and uh, I saw some people writing about that the door hands weren't in good quality, but that's not the impression that I have. Actually, when I when I pull here, it opens up, and it's it's pretty sturdy. The quality here, you cannot wriggle it in any way here. At least you need to put a lot of force in to do that. Um, then you have the interior here of the car. I'm not even moving the the paper in the bottom of the car. That's how new it is. Um, and then we have the, the back seats as well and bear in mind it's a bit dark in the, the parking basement i'm in right now uh, but this one here is, is pretty good room i think compared to the system model y actually it's very similar to uh, to the size you have in, in the back one thing when i compare it to the system model y uh, that it doesn't have is the electrical there's some buttons down here, which you cannot see in the dark, but I can actually adjust the seats here. And you hear them drive up and down here. Um, when it comes to storage of the car, and the storage space in children, um, the Fisker is having less storage room compared to the, the Model Y. There's no front, and uh, the trunk here is 470 ish liters whereas the tesla model y has i think 860 in the back and 100 something in the front so you'll get more storage room in uh, the model y performance um yeah so uh, if i just open up the door over here i can just show you a bit of the interior um so this is the this is the steering wheel, and you have over here. You can just uh, whether you want to go right now. It's in parking. Here you have if you want to go in back or forward. Right, you can do. You can see you have where you have the park and, and the drive here as well. Um, there's a lot of the, the self-driving features or the uh, driving support features that will come on later, right? But when it comes to the um, um, uh, the uh, the, the cruise control, that one actually already works. Then we have uh, this here, which is, you know, if I want to speak speak and say command, that doesn't work yet. Uh, over here, I can adjust the different drive modes. And I think the hyper, even though this one is called fun, I think the hyper is the fast one, the most fun one we got. So when we talk about the infotainment system and also the the system in general here 
Uh, obviously, right, the Tesla Mod Y is faster when it comes to when it press the different buttons. This is, you know, it's not that slow, at least when it's the buttons down here, but the DPS one is a bit slower compared to the other ones. But here you can press the different the different addresses. Uh, I think at the later stage, you might be able to, uh, to speak in through the voice command system, but that is not activated as I understood for, uh, for now. Uh, at least I've not figured out if it's uh, activated or not. Then you can uh, press in the address, and the fun part is here that when you press in an address, uh, let me just try to press one in here. If you can find that one. There we go. This was actually the shopping mall I wanted to find. Then uh, it finds the route, it tells how much percentage of power that is left. And obviously, right, this is faster on, on uh, the Tesla Model Y. The remaining of the menus, I think they're actually fairly fast uh, when you, you press that down. I don't have my contacts loaded in here. Odometer charts, let's press again here. Odometer. So it's fairly, uh, fairly uh, effective of the system here. Then you have the. This is electronically, uh, just like on the Tesla, which is cool. Then you have. Uh, the speed of the fans, you can turn up or down here. Also works real well. The temperature over here. Um, and then you have the, the heated seats here as well. And there's a lot of things you can adjust in the car, just like audio, connectivity, smart telephone, lighting, safety, and so forth. We'll get back to that later. Okay guys, now I'm just putting, putting it in uh, rare mode driving. And here you can see, you got the camera up here. And I can just choose between the different cameras if I want to change that. And also down here, I have the, the GPS available while, while driving. So when it comes to the camera, there are different options here you can choose from. So here you can press and see the, the rear camera. You can also see from the side. I think there'll be a, a 360 uh, camera view on the, at a later date. Then you can also uh, press up here. You can see the the cameras you have on uh, on the side of the car here, and then the, you can also enter the the front camera, uh, which I think find good for for parking in the parking basement where I live. Yeah. So I know there's been a lot of questions and a bit of concern around the sunroof. So uh, with, due to the stripes in the sunroof here, is that going to annoy the the driver or the passengers? And here you can just say they have. Since you have seen it, um, they have tinted this out. So, and actually in an, an extent where I don't think it at all annoys either the driver or the passengers in the car. So that's a really good job. And the car, the, the camera doesn't really show how much they actually have done here. So I think this is a really, really good job they have uh, done here. You can open the uh, sunroof from uh, from this button here and actually this is also a bit of a first time for me. I know when I pull this one out down, I'm going to go into uh, California mode where it just drives down, uh, pulls down all the uh, all the windows. I mentioned before that there were no 3D surround camera, but actually there is a 3D surround camera and it actually already works. So that's pretty cool. I didn't expect that to be available already. So, just for you to see the, the graphics here, uh, I'm just going to turn on the, uh, the car here and the light. And you can see on the sides, you have this as well, lighting up. And also the door handles are actually lighting up as well. And then you have the lights here in the back, which also are lighting up. And as you see that, graphic there we go pretty cool so the big question here at the end of the video is should you choose the tesla model y performance or should you choose the fisker ocean one and let me just begin with the tesla model y performance the reasons why you should choose that one because it really depends what your needs are the answer i'm going to give you but the tesla model y you should choose that one if the UI UX experience is really important to you because Tesla, since they're more mature, they have a more mature software where the Fisk is still catching up on that. Um, the Tesla Model Y 
also have the, the charting network, uh, which is also very beneficial if you want to utilize that one. Have a Tesla is a good idea um, as well. And then finally, um, when it comes to luggage space, so the, having a frunk and also having a larger trunk, you should choose the Tesla Model Y. So when it comes to uh, choosing the Fisk Ocean 1, uh, you should choose that one because of the range as one thing. Is range if really important for you, then you should choose that one. And um, I know that a lot of people in this transition over into electrical cars have this range anxiety, but having a Fisk Ocean 1, I don't really think you should have that because at least when we uh, look at the range uh, on the paper, this one here has almost a 40% longer range compared to the um, uh, Tesla Model Y performance. The Tesla Model Y performance here in, in, in Europe has a range of 513 kilometers on the WLTP standard, whereas the Fisk Ocean one has a range of 701, so almost 40% longer range, which is really, really impressive compared to the, the, the size of the, um, the car. Um, you should also choose this car because it's actually more comfortable driving. I know that's uh, up to each individual. Not you know that's my impression of the car. But driven a numerous uh, amount of different cars, Ford, Audi, BMW. I would say this is one of the most comfortable cars when it comes to the suspension uh, and driving capabilities it has, and also. This is taken into consideration. It has 22 inch rims. You cannot feel that at all when you drive. Uh, and that you can really feel on the Tesla Model Y performance. And then one more thing to also just mention here, which I haven't mentioned in the video, is when you turn the car, this car turns much easier on a plate, right? Whereas you will need um, a bigger area when you, when you want to drive around in your Tesla Model Y. As, uh, as it's yeah, it just requires more room to, to 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 turn left or right in the Model Y compared to this one here. And then finally, if you choose this one here, uh, one more good argument is the entire strategy around you know uh, uh, building it uh, with a very sustainable material, right? The the different unique technologies you'll see in the car, as the the uh, the, the sunroof and also you know the California mode is there's no car with that uh, feature as well. Um, yeah, so I think that was uh, the final word to me. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. See you out there. Bye.